Good morning. My name is Ruri Hiromi from White Project. Uh, today, we will talk about uh, our effort in deploying IPv6 called IP, uh, no, called V6 Fix. We have two topics. I will introduce uh, V6 Fix. Uh, that is an effort to so solve uh, uh, problems in IPv6 deployment uh, focused on IPv4 and IPv6 dual stack environment. Technical analysis of specific problems found in uh, the real world. In the next, Kenjiro will talk about tools and measurement. Uh, let me start with the current status of IPv6 deployment status. Uh, currently, uh, the major, a majority of uh, equipment and software are already IPv6 ready, uh, such as uh, major routers and operating systems and applications. Uh, but we have still uh, many applications and appli appliances work only with IPv4. In addition, IPv6 has been getting in various business fields such as sensor networks, uh, building automations, and other uh, kind of business uh, new field. However, most people lack knowledge and experiences on IPv6. Uh, when non-experts encounter a problem, they are often clueless. We think that is the problem. Here is an example. Hotel internet systems have an instruction for their guests. Uh, they said for the troubleshooting, uh, if you have IPv6 enabled, please disable IPv6. This picture is the real brochure of the hotel. Uh, the cause of the problem was a combination of two factors, uh, we suppose. Uh, uh, one is the DNS redirection system always returns specific A resource record uh, for any kind of card queries. And the client stub resolver accept the A for CAT A and can't go anywhere. Uh, I will uh, talk uh, details uh, later. And uh, it found that uh, faulty beha behaviors are only 1% and are often combinatorial. But it could be fatal to acceptance of IPv6. In addition to the hotel internet case, faulty behaviors come from such as slow fallback to IPv4 when encountering IPv6 errors, misbehaving DNS resolvers, filtering out of IC, uh, ICMP v6 packet by firewalls, DNS misconfigurations, uh, poorly configured tunnels, Lock and lock up pairing or IPv6 capable path. That uh, we think known problems are just the tip of an iceberg. We need to act now, or they would bring a negative impact to the IPv6 deployment. We set up a research group called V6 Fix to technically identify, analyze, solve real world problems in IPv6 deployment. Our enemy, we think, after trials and errors, disabling IPv6 fixed my problem. Uh, after several problem analysis, 
we realized the importance of cooperation among researchers, implementers, and operators. Because overlooked problems are often found at boundaries of specification, implementation, and operation. Uh, there is a uh, V6 weeks covers topics. Harmful effects of the, of the on-link assumption, misbehaving DNS servers and the result bus, slow fallback to IPv4 after a failure of TCP connection attempt, misconfigured firewalls, comparative analysis of the quality of the IPv6 internet. Here I show you two example, examples. The case one is the DNS loop at hotel. Uh, as I talked before, it is a real story. We went to the same room and investigated the problem. Uh, the problems are as follows. DNS is intercepted and redirected to the sign up page. IPv6 enabled users can't go beyond the first page. Hotel has an instruction for disabling IPv6. Caused by a combination of erroneous DNS redirection system and stop result bars uh, is the uh, uh, it turns out uh, we it, that uh, caused the problem. The redirection system always returns the A, a specific A resource record for the sign up page when receiving non A queries. Client stop resolver queries cut A first for any addresses and always receives the same A and blindly accept it. In this case, it could proceed the whole process, but users encountered a significant delay in responding name resolution. Uh, this is also a real story. And Japanese ISP upgrades uh, their DNS cache server to bind 9 and received complaints about slow down. The user said, uh, it is not comfortable in web browsing through your network. After their investigation, they built by 9 without IPv6. Uh, then uh, the problem fixed. And reported it that Japanese network operators group Uh, this caused by order bind 9 without IPv6 connectivity. The server without IPv6 connectivity always tries to talk over IPv6 and ends up when falling back to IPv4 after timeouts. Fixed in bind, uh, the current version of the bind 9 uh, has, has been already fixed. The problem. There might be three factors. The problems appear only with specific, specific combinatorial conditions. The implementers and operators did not notice the problems until someone reported the problem. Even for the professionals, it wasn't easy to track down the problems. Okay, um, I'm Kenjiro Cho. Uh, I'm gonna cover uh, measurement uh, results uh, from this project. So Ruri talked about the specific problems. And he, here uh, we are trying to uh, get a big picture of the current deployment status. So our goal is to understand the macro level uh, status of the IPv6 deployment. 
and we are using uh, two different technologies. Uh, the first one is the wide area measurement of the behaviors of the second level and the third level DNS servers. And, and the second measurement uh, is uh, comparative path analysis with IPv4 and IPv6 dual stack. So here are the results from DNS server measurements. So basically, we are trying to figure out the, the number of uh, DNS servers that cannot handle uh, quad queries. Uh, this is within uh, .jp domains. And the table basically shows a percentage of the uh, 40 servers. So uh, about 0.13%, just 0.13% of the servers uh, cannot currently cannot handle quad queries. And the details are listed in the, uh, the bottom table. And uh, most of the problem uh, come from lame delegation. Uh, it's not listed here. But uh, there are other reasons. Uh, the one is a DNS servers uh, ignore, ignore a quad Quad, uh, quad query. And the second one is uh, DNS servers uh, returns uh, R code 3, uh, it's NX domain. So if they cannot, uh, they don't have quad records, they have to return no error with empty, uh, uh, empty answer, uh, but they return NX domain. And uh, there are other uh, types of servers that return other kind of uh, errors. So the percentage is small, but still these servers are out there. And people, if, when people are using IPv6, uh, the <coughs> uh, users are sometimes encounter these problems. And here, uh, I'm going to talk the second measurement. Uh, this is a dual stack path analysis. Uh, <coughs> So uh, we are trying to develop uh, measurement techniques specifically designed for dual stack measurement. So the idea is to take measurement for both IPv4 and IPv6 at the same time and compare v6 results with v4 uh, results and extract problems that exist only in IPv6. So we are trying to separate the problem of IPv6 network uh, from IPv4 network because uh, currently most of the IPv6 uh, networks are deployed over IPv4 using tunnels. So we're using methodologies uh, that consist of three steps. So the first one is dual stack no discovery. We are trying to create a huge list uh, by monitoring DNS quad replies. And using these lists, uh, we are we're using a uh, dual stack pin. Basically, this is a uh, pin and normal pin and pin six uh, to, to the target list. And we select a few representative nodes per site, uh, in this case, slash 48, uh, by RTT ratios. And in the third step, uh, we, are, uh, we are running the trace route and trace route six uh, to the selected, selected nodes. And uh, we visualize IPv6 and uh, IPv6 path MTUs uh, to obtain mac macro level uh, pass or uh, v6 tunnel situations. And also we, we visualize v4 and v6 pass to neighboring sites for comparative analysis. So here is an example. Uh, this is a distribution of IPv4 and IPv6 RTTs. Uh, IPv4 RTT is plotted on the X axis, and the V6 RTT is plotted on the Y axis. And the uh, left picture is, uh, left graph is from <coughs> uh, NISA net results, and the right graph is from, uh, taken from ISC. So uh, if the IPv6 RTT is similar to IPv4 uh, nodes uh, plotted around the unity line, uh, but if the individual nodes are plotted far above the unity line, it means basically deep issues. And if there is a cluster above the unity line, uh, there are some problems in backbone. So 
in this uh, left glove, uh, there are lots of nodes plotted above the unity line. So there must be some problem in the backbone. So uh, this is hard to see, but uh, we visualize the uh, trace route result uh, using uh, graph bits utility. And this is basically uh, to visualize path and MTUs. So uh, edges are colored by MTU. Uh, blue lines are basically uh, MTU less than uh, 1,500. Uh, so it means tunnels. And nodes are colored by RIRs. And uh, this is uh, measurement is from NISANET to R insights. So, uh, so many sites from NISANET to R insights are going through Japan. So uh, this is a typical problem of uh, lack of tunnels. And uh, this, this, this is what we, we saw in the left glove. So lots of uh, sites, uh, when you're using uh, IPv6 uh, paths, basically uh, going through Japan. And uh, this is from uh, ISC to our insights. So path looks much better, but there are lots of blue edges. That means there are lots of tunnels still out there. So, so Abilene case uh, in, the, in the NISANET results a very known problem. So Abilene has been trying to encourage IPv6 adoption and uh, there are no AUPs or uh, they provide uh, tunnel services for IPv6. Uh, but uh, Abilin ended up with horrible IPv6 paths, uh, mostly with tunnels. Because uh, many ISPs are pairing with uh, Abilin and uh, they just don't uh, want to move to paid IPv6 connectivity. So uh, I heard currently Abilene is thinking about suspending uh, its relaxed AUP for IPv6 to uh, encourage ISPs to move to you know, commercial IPv6 connectivity. So our tool is uh, used to illustrate such issues and we are hoping to you know, help you know, convince operators uh, to move to better IPv6 environment. So uh, this one is an example of dual stack trace route visualization. This is uh, from White to Abilene. Uh, we plot neighboring sites and their paths, and each target is, uh, is plotted. Uh, in this figure, 10 targets are plotted, and we uh, we plot B4 path and B6 path uh, in the same graph. So uh, in, this class, uh, in this graph, uh, they have a similar RTT or hopes for IPv4 and IPv6, and basically it's a native dual stack path from white to Aberdeen. So this is an example of a commercial path so currently, commercial paths, uh, basically they are using <coughs> completely different routing for B4 and B6. So these nodes have similar RTT but different paths. Uh, this is very common in the current B6 deployment. And uh, this one is the example of uh, B6 has much larger RTT than IPv4. Uh, they are basically uh, roundabout, roundabout tunnels. So uh, B6 takes much longer to reach the target. So to conclude, uh, there are only a few misbehaving uh, nodes uh, deployed in the, in the IPv6 network, uh, but often they are uh, problems are com combine, uh, combine problems are co uh, combinatorial and uh, this problem could be fatal to acceptance of IPv6. 
So we are trying to list uh, specific problems uh, we encounter in the re real world, and also we are trying to get a big picture and try to uh, promote adoption of IPv6. And the important thing we realize is to share information among uh, different groups, and, uh, and especially we, we need a cooperation among researchers, implementers, and uh, operators. <clears throat> so we believe we should uh, act now, and uh, otherwise you know, this problem could be very uh, problematic to IPv6 deployment. Uh, so uh, here we list our uh, collaborators and uh, uh, people who help our measurements. So information is available from here. And also uh, our tools are available. Uh, it, it's a basically Perl script and uh, or other tools are written in C. So uh, if you can share, for example, trace route result, uh, please try the tool and send result to us. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for either of our speakers here this morning? Please come up to the mic. No? If not, thank you both very much. Appreciate it.